I can see it from their perspective as well. Like I can empathize why player itu ternyata lebih milih main ke tim lain terus. Okay. But the most important thing is just the GI, right? Of course. That's that's the main main problem of my 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 thought. I think about the, mm. the cancellation of the of the major. Thank you for the opinion. So let's back uh, to the main topic about the uh, the transfer rumor, all the uh, all the preparation before regional finals because this is uh, is kind of getting out of control. Like the teams not even announce it, but the community <laughs> or or even the the. the The player itself kind of teasing the the viewer, the fans, <laughs> kind of uh, you know giving uh, some clue that maybe going nowhere is just a kind of joke, but the community kind of take it more seriously. I mean, that's kind of crazy. But first question is: Is it uh, allowed uh, by the rules to change the player before the regional finals? Mike, John, want to start? I I think it's allowed because. The, the rules don't imply that there was going to be a regional finals at the end of the day, right? So I oh. think there's no major, mm. so the rules don't count anymore. Uh, like, no major means, well, why not, right? That I don't think there's any rule saying they can't do that. Okay. I They can, but I think um, what we were... T I think we asked this question so for admins, and the feedback that we heard offhand, again, this, this is all off-the-records conversations, was that there could be DPC penalties. So there, it might not be an officially major. This, this is technically the legal period for roster changes for every other team not in regional finals. This is the legal period to change your team. But for the teams participating, participating in regional finals, if they make a change right before, they will be treated with a DPC penalty, in as far as I know. So there should be penalties for that. It, kind of the same thing with what used to happen when you go to a major, you kick a player to go to the major, you get penalized. For that, so I think the same thing might happen for those teams going in here. I don't know. I, I'm not even sure if any of these teams um, talked about that with any of the admins. And as far as I know, no one has asked about. No one has asked that question from the team. So, who knows? Okay. Okay. So, uh, I mean, let's start with the team that already shuffled their, their roster. I mean, uh, Narman, Husla, going for mm. the Army Genesis. I mean. Uh, I'm not saying that that's a bad decision. I mean, just like uh, he lose the upper division slot to play with other teams that playing on the lower division. I mean, uh, I know it's a personal decision. Uh, he said uh, exactly on the videos that uh, he want to try something new uh, with the Army Genesis, but losing the slot on the upper division is kind of a bold move from Norman or Husla, John. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting move. I think. Well, when you think about that move from TNC to AG, and considering what I what I thought TNC's biggest issue was might have been comms, I don't know if that's any easier on AG. Mind you, I talk a lot to the AG boys, Verish, Wami. Uh, they're all really good. Azura, they they do speak well. I'm just not sure how comfy they are personally. Mm -hmm. You know, running on comms, yelling out in English. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that Norman will have to deal with again. But he sort of had to deal with. Uh, playing on Neon anyway, so uh, playing on TNC anyway, so mm -hmm. I think he's gonna be able to adjust. And for Army Genesis, this is a big upgrade. I mean, I love LYM, I love LYM, but Narman is a step above. Like he was the reason why TNC would look good sometimes because his pause four plays were sick. So I think this is a big upgrade for the Batam squad or formerly based in Batam squad. And okay. I'm keen to see if this is enough to push them because AG's had issues, and they've been shifting players around since start of tour one. They lost a couple of key players. Mamang Dai is gone. Mm -hmm. um, LYM has gone now. UK was gone. So they're still trying to find themselves. And I think Norman's going to help solidify that. And just, again, how well the comms work, I, I know. Okay. Okay. So different question to you, Mike. I mean, like, uh, how does this affect OB Neon on the next season? I mean, they lose the, the key player uh, on, the, on the first uh, season. And what... What move that Obinion you you expecting to to uh, to go to the second uh, season? I'm not sure. I mean, have they 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 haven't even locked anyone in that pause four role yet, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's still up in the air. I, I think mm. John might have a little bit of info, but I don't know if we can <laughs> share it. I 
I think it, I think it's a big effect on Obinion. I think Narman is a great pos four player, very natural in the role. I think he does set up a lot for the team and. Mm -hmm. And the decision to go down to Division 2 to AG as well, I mean, it, it kind of tells you something, right? It doesn't seem like Narman had much faith in the team oh. uh, of OB Neon. So I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, OB Neon, I think it's going to affect them pretty badly. I'm trying to think of who they could replace him with. But so I, who, I'm, no who? names are coming to mind. Okay, okay. You don't have, all right. All right. I just want to ask, like, uh, who, who's exactly the, the, the name that comes to your mind? Uh, to replace Narman right now. I mean, like, uh, just pops into your mind. I mean, yeah, everyone, mm. everyone kind of stick with the team right now, right? Uh, no announcement, no, uh, no inactive posting. I mean, like, uh, mm. they don't really have any, any option to to replace for Narman right now, right? I'd say BDZ, I, I, BDZ left execration. Right. Oh. He's a solid pause four. He's Filipino, so he'd get along. I think for <laughs> Neon, they've been trying to almost make it all Filipino again. I mean, and as far as their comms there. run, I think they understand. Yeah, Mamuda is still there, but I think he's been able to manage. But you know, you notice, you know, when they removed UK for Abeng, that was like a comm state. Of course, like they said they were much comfier speaking with uh, Abeng in Filipino. So I think if they were looking for a competent pause for BDZ is probably their best bet in the Filipino scene. I just, I feel like if they were taking BDZ, that should be done by now. So I'm not sure if if it's not happening now, then I'm not sure if it's going to happen at all. Okay. I agree with John on this one. I think B BDZ is one of the best pos fours in the scene. I think he is the most underrated position four player in Southeast Asia. I think he's in the man just makes magic happen. Those Marana plays, the Rubik plays. You love to watch it, and you know I, it didn't come to my mind, John. But I, I agree with you. I think if if you're Ob Neon's management team right now, you might want to just take BDZ while you can. Okay, okay. Before we start, uh, we we continue with the upper division or first division let's move to the lower division first talent esport is it kind of <laughs> i'm sorry that la uh, keep laughing uh every time i uh, talk about talent esport no. i mean like okay is this kind of just okay uh the team's not going well just separate away uh, gabby and also fly just uh out after all the match already done not even uh finishing all the schedule i mean like yeah their schedule is finished but all the teams still playing but uh out of nowhere talent esport announced that gabby and also fly uh out from from talent esport uh current roster i mean what's happened with talent esport is this just only okay guys didn't work out i'm out or the talent esport just one get a better replacement i mean if they want the better replacement gabby and fly is the best player right now in, in Southeast Asia, even in the world, I believe. What happened with Talons, Mike? Well, man, it was just a complete mess, quite frankly. I mean, <laughs> there's just no coordination. <laughs> uh, some of the drafts, I mean, some of the drafts you're looking at, you're just wondering what's going on. I, they just weren't playing as a team. I'm not sure. It's, it may have just been one of those situations where the players just don't play well together. Uh, I don't think it's a language barrier, right? I'm pretty sure pretty much every player there mm. speaks some form of English. So of yep. I can't blame language barrier on this. I just, it was, we had really big expectations for this team. Then they just, exactly. they felt real flat. And uh, quite frankly, I can't blame them. If they chose to kick Fly and Gabby, which I don't believe they did. But if they chose to kick both and try to restructure the team, I don't blame them. Because it, it doesn't look like that team could could be saved quite frankly okay uh it, it was just a mess I, i'm not sure if fly was struggling to draft in in the region you know maybe he's just not used to southeast asia uh gabby just didn't look like gabby anymore he just wasn't that crazy pause one we're used to I, i'm happy that they're changing rosters to be quite frank with you okay. I'm, I'm happy they're switching these things up because i mean everyone expected more everybody because yeah, the hype is I already think, uh, created when when Taiwan Esports announced the, ro the the roster before the um, DBC start uh, when they go mm. to the open qualifiers the hype is already built over there and but when it's come to the regional uh, sorry uh, when it's come to the uh, regular season like Mike said it's just kind of flat team I uh, didn't know how to coordinate uh, uh, to to win the games at least to close the game they they look like a strong team on the paper. But when it's come to the real game, they kind of, okay, this is team that just built up exactly to one weeks before before the open qualifier. So this is what you get, guys. I mean, don't expect too much. I mean, that's the, the message that I get from, from the talent esport for all the season, for the first season. But John, your thought now. 
Yeah, talents. Talents a strange one. I think um, their core issue. I, I'm going to say it. I think Fly was the big issue, in, oh, in my opinion. His drafts why, were just why? not. His drafts and his understanding of C just wasn't there. And it, it's a tall order to ask someone adapting from a very different region. NA is very different because me and Mike casted NA in the last season of DPC. Oh, NA is yeah. a very different region, and you just get uprooted. You have one week to adapt, run this team. To play an open qualifier, sure you managed to make it through just from pure skill. Actually, playing the teams in regular play is a different story. And I think um, there wasn't enough adjustment period for Fly. I think everyone, to be to be honest, almost everyone looked pretty bad. I think the only player that looked remotely good on Talon was really Hyde. Like Hyde was probably their best player in the region in in, in that entire tour. And I think changes will be needed. What what I'm wondering now is because you've got the situation where. You know, you've got Mikoto, Hyde, KP. Mm -hmm. So you have a free pass one, free pass five. What if Dreamo Cell came in oh with my God. on retiring? Do you, do you really bait that? Oh my God, John! So, but 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 the rumors I, I in Indonesia is kind of kind of uh, kind of uh, built up over over Dreamo Cell playing again with the uh, with the ex teammate from Bumi Sport uh, uh, previously, but. I think that's still a rumor, but you bait that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, it, it's the first thing that came to my mind. Wouldn't it be funny if Boom was an upper div and you have old Boom playing in lower div trying to hit back on old, new Boom? You know, it would be quite the storyline. I feel like, I mean, we already know that Randy wants to get back in. And as far as I know, I think Randy's expressed that he wants to get back into pro play. He, he said he'd take a season off. He wants to come back in. So that possibility is there. I don't know if he'd go into town, to be quite frank. Yeah, I haven't talked to anyone. No one's really mm -hmm. said anything. But I think if he did go to town, that would be the funniest one. I think I'd <laughs> love that just for the storyline. Okay, okay. Before we make any speculation about lower division, let's back to the <laughs> upper division. This is just getting out of control, getting out of my mind. T1, okay, you said it, it's... it's uh, like a obviously move uh, from uh, 23, uh, 23, 23 Savits that are removing the banner from the Twitter account, all the social, uh, social media account and all the players also make a pause that maybe lead us to the to the clue uh, which player that going to leave uh, T1. But I do believe, I think they don't have to make any replacement guys, Mike. A what replacement? Sorry. Uh, for for T one, I do believe that T one uh, doesn't need yeah. uh, the the uh, the replacement for the players. I mean, like they, oh, savage. Yeah, for the savage. I mean, yeah. if uh, let's let's uh, let's think that savage as actually leave, but uh, I think they don't have to be happen. Uh, that doesn't have to be happens. Right. What do you think? Yeah. Uh I, I agree with you. I, I couldn't really understand the decision there. I mean, I thought the team was doing real, really well already. They performed decently at TI. I, um, the, even the, the first iteration of this season, they I think they did pretty well. Like, yeah, they, they didn't come first, but it was still a pretty impressive performance. They're set to go to the major. Um, it seems like they, they want to get that step above because I think for an organization like T1, they don't care unless it's TI. So I think they'd rather just get the absolute best roster they can get right now to prepare for TI, because I believe they're very confident they're going to get to TI anyway. Okay. I agree with you, though. I think Savage was a good enough position one. I didn't think you needed to change him. Now, obviously, you've heard the rumors. Everyone's heard the rumors of who's joining T1, right? Okay, okay. I heard that. I heard that, but yeah. I, I don't think it's going to work out as well as everyone thinks if the room is exactly what I'm thinking, guys. I mean, like, yeah. joining just because you want to get a better position, better, res uh, better re uh, result in the in the regular finals, and you want that guy. Okay, let's just. Okay, we, we're. I think we're in the, in the, in the same, uh, same mind, same page. Uh, Anna will be joining, right? The rumors. Well, it's a maybe. It's a may just maybe. Okay, okay, just 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 a maybe. Let's let's pretend that's still a rumor, but it's kind of the 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 win is kind of kind of hard blowing. Anna joining, Anna joining, Anna joining. But if Anna joining, I'm not uh, questioning how good Anna as a player as a carry. He two times ch uh, TI champions, but joining after a long uh, break and then joining a team that maybe having a full expectation to win the regional finals. That's not gonna be happening so fast, I think. Mike, uh, sorry, John. 
Yeah, it's it's a lot to put onto any carry player that steps in to fill, fill that void for T1. I feel like their decision is the most baffling one to me because I felt like it, it felt like they were so invested in just running this five man. You know, like they, they've had Savage for a long time. They wanted Savage back when they failed to get him initially from Fnatic. You know, in tour in season one of the EPC last year. Remember when we had what Jackie and T1 for a while? And they took them a while to get Savage back in because of that entire mess. So I felt like that team was ready to invest and really nurture itself. But I, I guess one year is already enough time where you're like, where are we not improving? And you reach a dead end. You know, it, it's kind of like old boom, mm -hmm. right? With Mikata would hide, with Dream would sell, where they're like, we're just not moving forward. We're working together as a team. We think we're improving. I guess we need a change. So they just change players. And for old boom for a while, you know, that was a time when you had Drew playing when Dreamo Cell was off. So it's maybe the same process for T1. They want to see if a player change steers them up. Because I think for an org like that, you want to be number one. You know, you want to be number one. You're not You're not going to be happy with four. You're not going to be happy just there. You want to prove that you're really the best. And take for that kind of mindset, I guess they just ran out of ideas where to go. Okay. Let me intervene, though. In, in T1's defense, right, if it was Anna coming in, right, if, because it's not confirmed, but if it was... <laughs> If we're going to replicate OG back at oh, TI8, TI9, that happy-go-lucky kind of team, right? That makes him feel very comfortable. Because Anna's a naturally very quiet person, as you've seen in tr True mm -hmm. Side. He's, he doesn't talk much. He's not very extravagant in the way he acts. I think if there was a team to make him feel comfortable, it would be with Cuckoo. Because Cuckoo's Ooh. that... Like, you got Cuckoo, you got White Mon. They're funny. They like to joke around. They play pranks on each other. I think that'd be a team that makes Anna feel comfortable enough to perform at that level is is what i think they're thinking i don't know if it's going to work out that way but it might happen it might work out well you know there's the counterpoint with jarex coming into <laughs> eg and that didn't go so well right, right. like they're, they're, it, it goes two ways like these guys have been out they're great they're, they're great. one of the best of all time but they have taken a break so right that's it we'll see how it plays out you know if if anna comes in this is with big disclaimers as micah said if he does come in i think he has been playing a lot more then uh, I think Jarek's has he, he's grinded he's been playing like a maniac at the very least. So if he does come week. in, he's yeah, a hundred games. It's like that's nothing to scoff at. So okay. I think he if he came in, he'd be he might be better set than Jarek's at the least. Okay. So last team that we still not talk about is Boom Esport. I mean, like, ooh, the rumors is kind of. Oh, <laughs> I don't believe you guys done heard that. I mean, you know, maybe get replaced. Uh, I can tell you from the insider, but maybe that's kind of almost true, almost true. But <laughs> the replacement that uh, comes uh, in the Twitter rumors, all the players leak or uh, yeah, player joking around, it's either 23 or Jackie, right? What do you think? I mean, like, is it Tino? Uh, like, I, I don't know how to say it, but Tino is playing great, guys. I don't think he... Deserve mm. to be replaced. Go on, Mike. I think from you first. Well, look, I think if you're Boom Esports and you wanted to replace somebody, if I was managing Boom Esports, if I was Gary, I can't remember his last name, if I was Gary, <laughs> CEO of Boom Esports, and I wanted to replace one person as well as Tino's playing, I'm replacing Tino okay. every time. No doubt. I'm not replacing your part. There's no way you're replacing Japoy. Of course. That guy is a, a diamond in the rough. You're never changing him. Scam works too well with Japoy. You can't do. You can't change them either. And then you've got Tim's, who's a god in the pos four role. It, it, it's like you've only got that one choice. And I think it's just NFBZ's been playing fantastic from the offline. You can't change it. Now I agree with you that Tino is doing a fantastic job, but it seems like Boom Esports has a player in mind potentially that they want that they wanted from before that they may be able to get now. I'm not saying Tino's going anywhere. All I'm saying is. <laughs> It seems like they've had an opportunity to get someone they previously wanted. Okay, and so they, yeah. they might be taking it. Okay, okay. So if I I have one more question, if that's really gonna be happens, who is the best option? I mean, like the two players that I said before, mm. twenty three and also Jackie. Who is the best player, or maybe the better player to replace uh, Tino uh, from that two option? I mean, like yeah, both is great. I mean, like uh, I know. Uh, motivated trust gaming uh, get re uh, relegation to the second division but 
JK is always playing great whenever the team win or lose, right? I, I, I think you guys agree with that. But also 22 Savits, um, sometimes he's shine, sometimes he's not. I mean, who's the best option, yeah. Mike? If it was up to me, it see, because the way Boom <laughs> plays, I would go with Jack, right? Oh. Because I think Jackie really flourishes when he's just protected. When you just let him disappear, let him farm, he will just out-farm everybody, right? Okay. And I think you've got a great playmaker like Japoy in the mid lane. He's just going to make all the space in the world. You've Tim's is the same. FBZ is the same. You know, it's they will make him the space. Now, I think it goes back to a point you just made. 23 Savage, he's a bit hot and cold. He, he's not consistently good, right? Or rather consistently great. So if it was up to me, based on the roster they already have, because I know they can create the space, I would take Jack. Okay. So you go with Jackie if the rumors is true, okay, guys? If the rumors were true. If the rumor is true. So, to, to John right now, the mister, all the information, and also prediction. So, uh, same question first. Do you think Tino uh, deserves to be replaced, John? Deserve to be replaced? No, I think Boom, again, exceeded expectations for a lot of people. I think mm -hmm. um, Tino... When you think about Boom, and this is what I've been saying, I think you've got such f four great players that literally anyone on the one would be carried. Like, they wouldn't be doing the carry. He'd be carried to do his job. So I think what Boom's looking for is for someone on the one who'd actually carry them, despite all the work they're doing, to elevate them. And I think uh, out of those two, I mean, Tino is just, he's a great player, he's stable, but he's not flashy. You know, he's, he's, not, a, he's not a player that is, like, top 10 carries right now or at least in terms of ranking like savage is what number one right now in the leaderboard jackie's number two or number three they're all within that range of top five so if you had to choose between them i'd say those are the right choices to make when it comes down to the right player to fit boom this is where i struggle a bit because i do agree with mike i think jackie would be a really okay. good fit play play style wise because his hero pool is definitely benefits a lot from that passive play at the same time there's times when boom plays a lot faster especially when they pick tino like a razor so i think if they want to replicate that speed on the pause one i'm honestly not sure if jackie or savage is even better at that because savage has the same play style where he plays really slow on his one okay i yeah. guess savage might have a better time compared to jackie with a fast paced pause one in the end but thinking about internal comms with the english going on I talk a lot to Jackie. He never wants to talk to me with interviews. You know, every time we do media day, I talk to Motivate Trust. I'm like, we need someone to bring in. I'm talking to Fearless. I'm like, can you get Jackie? And then I talk to Jackie. He doesn't want to talk. He's very shy. <laughs> I think with a team like Boom, you can't afford to be shy. I think Savage is a lot more outspoken when it comes down to it. And he'd be pretty easy to talk to in terms of comps. Jackie, I mean, we talk with Jackie, but he's just shy in interviews. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... You know, maybe he's just scared of interviews. And in the end, he's just talking to me if he had to do an interview. So, I don't know. I feel like Savage would be a better fit comms-wise. Um, play style-wise, I think both of them are very even. I worry about Boom losing that aspect of a fast pause one. Like the Razor pause one speed. In that sense, I think Savage is better because he at least has the Kunk he's been playing recently. Okay. Can I defend Tino here for a second? <laughs> Please, you said Tino's not even top 10. John and X5, he came first in I mean, the whole tour one. No, I mean, I mean like in, in MMR ranking, MMR ranking. No, 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 ranking no, 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 right? I said MMR You didn't add that disclaimer. You didn't add that disclaimer. I said like in MMR, in MMR. Tino is top 10. Yes, yes, they're number one. Yes, of course. They're number one right now in CE. But in terms of individual player skill, in terms of MMR, it's still Jackie, it's still Savage, and even I think, who's up there? VT Faded as well? I mean, yeah, these, these guys are like within top 10, yeah. So, like, individually, these guys are grinding way more and, you know, getting MMR. So, on paper, they are upgrades for sure.